knew there would be a war. For some reason, it seemed to me that the war was going to happen. And even a few days before the start of the war, I was teaching people how to take pictures in a media school. I even said that this may be the last photos of peaceful Kherson. And unfortunately, that did happen. Last days, it was in the air. My relative called me. It was about six in the morning. Sanya, the war started. I woke up. What war? He says, that's it. The Russians attacked us. And a few minutes later, I could see Chernobyevka, the Kherson International Airport, from my windows, and I heard popping noises and saw smoke coming out. And that's how I understood that the war had begun. We are very glad that you came to the opening of our photo exhibition on Concord Kherson today. This is the author of these works, Alexander Karnikov, and you've probably seen his most famous works in all media. On the 1st of March, when the Kherson was captured, my house also got shelled. It is located near Buskovy Park, and we have seen it all. How the boys were shot. Our house also got shot. Windows, doors and the balcony flew out. We were lucky that we were sitting in the corridor with my husband and were not hurt. We took binoculars from a neighbor and reported their coordinates to Ukrainian military because we were on the 12th floor and from the window we could see the Chernobyevka airport. I understand that we were not the only ones who did this. Many people did it and were very happy when our soldiers attacked according to our coordinates. It was burning. We photographed it. However, as we fled, it was necessary to hide these pictures. We must return to Kherson. There is still a lot of work, there are a lot of collaborants, and there are a lot of questions for them. People of Kherson came to this protest because they didn't agree with the fact that the city was captured by the invaders. Because the people of Kherson consider themselves Ukrainians a part of Ukraine, and not a part of the Russian Empire. When there was a call to go to the rally, I went and thought that 300, 200, maybe 500 people would come as usual. I thought if there is 500, it would be good. In Kherson, people usually do not go to such events in the, in the initiative. I'm walking, Another three or four blocks, there are a lot of people. They go with flags, with symbols. I think, wow. But when there are three or four blocks left, and you already hear people shouting, I stopped walking and started running there. I came, so many people. Some says there were 12, 15,000. I cannot say for sure, but there were a lot of people. I have not seen such protests in Kherson. I was making a video of people marching from the beginning of March to its end. People were walking for about 15 minutes. My hand got tired of holding the camera, but I thought I should capture it to the end. I have never seen so many people. Russian soldiers were very, very close. I could see that they were scared. They clung to their assault rifles and machine guns. I don't know, they were told that we would, would greet them with flowers. But there were such strong slogans that I think that they didn't like it very much. You could see these photos in various media, BBC, Al Jazeera, Reuters. I think that some of the most famous shots of her son are here. I came, frankly, just to stand quietly, to support with my presence. But when I saw that there were no speakers, I took the loudspeaker. And for a month or so, everything the orcs heard from our Kherson community, they heard in my voice. Russian soldier, fascist, an invader. 
They do not imagine that such a thing can happen in any country at all, because it is impossible in the Russian Federation. They li live in another universe. For them, this is picture itself. The fact that in an occupied city, when there is a war around, under machine gun fire, armed thugs are around, people come out without weapons, simply to show with the words that Kherson is Ukraine. We don't want Russia an occupation. That's something they can never understand. We showed our soldiers at the front, our soldiers of the light with weapons in their hands, that women, children, the sick, the old, the children, go out unarmed against armed people, against tanks, against the invaders, and are not afraid. About 40,000 wounded, and two-thirds of the Russian army military equipment destroyed. Killers! 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 It was scary. It was scary every day. I've read a lot of guidelines for journalists on how to behave. You go scrolling through everything in your head, just in case, trying not to forget anything. And you just go there, you just know that there are people there, you know that they have to do it. It was necessary to cover these protests, since they invaded from the first days, they seized the TV tower, the TV center and began to broadcast the news. Watching all their news, you think, what kind of parallel reality are they from? Where do they get all this? They come up with some nonsense, shoot it themselves, but the city lives in a completely different way. It was clear from the first days that the repression had begun, at first against the military veterans of the anti-terrorist operation, but with the first rally they started repression against activists and of course against journalists. The Russian guardmen also filmed us. There were one or two people who stood with a camera and filmed everything that happened from their side. I saw that. As I was walking, he was following me with a camera. I went back, he followed me. So I understood that they were following me. Fortunately, no one came after me the following days. These were the best moments of my life. Some of the best memories are from these protests. This was such a catalyst of patriotic feelings. I finally saw my community. We lived for so many years in the same city. It seemed to me that there were just a bunch of us activists, 19 people who came to some events. And now I saw that this is my community, that it is really cool, that I want to return to these people, I want to live in this city with these people, I want to to live with them, build my city, develop it. I want them all to return home. We left only because our oldest child was finishing the 11th grade. She had to take the final exam. And when we saw how our child was lying and staring all day at the wall, that is the child understands that her life is over. She will not pass the school exams. She will not enter the university. The parents had to pull themselves together, load the car and take the child where I left her son in the morning of August 10. The Russians were looking for me. Then my work there was over. I simply was not able to do it, so I left. But I was lucky. I saw that people's laptops and phones were checked, but they only looked through my documents and things. I was lucky, I guess. Going into protests was simply scary, and working with a camera is even scarier. I believe that this exhibition takes you back there. These are my impressions.
Как не рынка. Now, when we have already left for different places, regions of Ukraine, I believe that Kherson is the strongest place of Ukraine now. I call Kherson the capital of courage. And my first action, when Kherson is liberated, I will go there to meet my parents. Maybe without children, I don't know how it will be liberated, but I will go there to hug them. After the liberation of the city, I will immediately go to Kherson. Regardless, if my apartment is intact, even if it's not, I'll go there, I'll be there. <laughs> 